Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to you two. Great to see you, Leanne. How are you? Hi. Good, good. Jesse, how are you, sir? I'm great, Sean. How are you doing? You're great. Excellent. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to look at some charts in a moment, analyse what's going on in the market, let you know how we're playing it. Welcome along, everybody. Let's get into it, Leanne. What have you got for us today? I'll start with Bitcoin, the one that's causing the most distress <laughs> for all of us. So why don't I start with that? I'm still in my long on Bybit, so I'm dying to hear what you got to tell me. Well, Sean and Jesse, the BTC chart, I actually flicked it over to the Heikinashi candles today just because I wanted to see how many red days we'd had and I'm a little bit over it and I, I would like to see a little bounce at the very least. I've just actually put the volume profile indicator on also on, on the side so we could see where the support levels are. Uh, we're having two taps down at this revisiting that that uh, level down here and we had two taps down below also so I'm tr I always try and just look for patterns and formations that might repeat themselves but the interesting thing about Bitcoin I have no idea what it's going to do obviously it could go either way it seems like a bit of a fair fight at the moment but I will take a look at the CME futures gap just because it's an interesting one to look at so I'll do that now this is the CME futures chart. I, I don't actually look at it that often, but again, I've been doing a lot of, you know, research into patterns and charts and possibilities that, that um, are on the table. So whilst CME gaps do or don't need to be filled, again, it's a, they seem to be a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. We had one down in the um, 20 zone that never got revisited. So... Up in the, you know, up in this region here where you can see all my highlights, that's that's a big gap. So uh, that's the difference between the closing price of the spot and the futures over a weekend. So I'm interested, you know, my thesis with Bitcoin is that it needs to revisit these zones before it decides if it wants to break up or break down. So I'm, I'm hopeful for a bounce. So that's, that's a really interesting chart. There's a gap down here too in the... 54 range so yeah that's an interesting chart for us all to look at to gauge what the possibilities are so so I'm gunning for a bounce at the very least me too I'm in a I'm in a long so <laughs> bounce away so here's a theory very quick it it visited the the levels I'd targeted as I said I think we missed it by about $50 and it's bounced pretty hard. So it actually looks nice and strong right now. So uh, th there's a possibility it revisits this support down here in the 1800 to 2000 region. That would be if Bitcoin took a massive hit, I would say. But otherwise, we're looking strong for the 3000 region. Uh, so yeah, I like the look of the Ethereum chart. It's looking good. Jesse nodding his head there. You got a nice little ETH position, Jesse. My ETH position uh, became a fraction of what it used to be, but only because I, I used it for some uh, ulterior investment uh, opportunities recently, which, which I'm kind of happy that happened uh, pretty soon before this recent bloodbath that we all just experienced. Good. We will hear about some of your alternate investments uh, back into the show. Next chart, Leanne. I'm bringing this on because just very quickly it hit uh, my target zone. And whilst this has been a long-term play for me, uh, the, the long-term play because a lot of the big boys are backing this one and that you know, is something to me. So I've actually taken a little bit of profit off the table in the region. I, I missed my own top by you know, a few, I think 50 cents or something, but I've taken some profit off the table and I just want to leave that for a dip buy. Should we see a retrace with Bitcoin? I'm planning for both possibilities. I wanted some ammunition to buy some more souls. So if we do dip back down, we yeah, we would be looking at the $17 region where the support is on the VP, VPVR. So anyway, the, the support regions are marked and I planning for worst case scenarios and I'll stack some orders down there to rebuy some more soul. Should I should I get the opportunity? Hopefully I don't though. So that's that's again, hopefully I don't get the opportunity for these things. 
certainly a lot of chatter about soul, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, you put it on our radar. I'm, I'm doing nicely on that one. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And the next three I'm going to quickly bring up again, not too much to talk about really, but I, I've noticed there's a lot of patterns forming again, uh, and I think they're reaccumulation patterns. And I'll just show you, We the other week we looked at uh, AVAX here and I had the lazy trend ride, uh, which it was in the channel and it was looking really nice, except Bitcoin took its dump. So I've turned a little lady upside down and the brass strap, I've just put put some notes there that the brass strap pattern broke, the W failed, the channel was broken. So that was all wrong. Uh, but I did have the um, support levels drawn in and we have tapped that three times. Should we tap it a go through on a fourth time? That's really bad news. And we've also retraced 60%. So I actually drew up some percentage drops to see where we were at. So for me, this is a reaccumulation zone. I feel like there's just one more leg up before we get anything drastic. So a 60% drop from its last top for me is a buy uh, generally. And if it was to drop further, we're, we're looking at, you know, 80, 100% retracements. And and that's not a, I mean, it's one of the possibilities, but it, it, it changes the game for everything if, if that is to happen. So the next chart I'll bring up is just to show you that there's this repeating pattern on all of them. Okay, I'll show you GRT, which is the other one from last week. It's got exactly the same pattern happening. And this one's had a drop 52%. It also broke the channel like AVAX. So those when, when that happens, I just leave the channel there and then I'll readjust the channel when we get an uptrend again. So for me, I need that to see that the thesis was wrong. However, my thesis of reaccumulation is taking shape now and if I'm wrong it's going to break through that so that's when my um, I need to reevaluate everything and and that's that trades that doesn't work anymore so uh, it could break down to 66 where the VPVR is and my last level of the breakout level so they're all possibilities I don't want them to play out but you have to you know, take that into account. And that's when it's really nice to have some dip capital if it was a project you were really interested in. We have another one with exactly the same pattern. There's there's so many with this actual pattern that it's it's blaringly obvious there's some reaccumulation going on to me. This is SNX. This has had a nearly, again, a 50% drop and we've got the three taps happening again. So for me, this is, again, it's, it's a typical pattern playing out. There's lots of support being shown in this $16 region. And for me, you know, this is 50% off the top is a buy. So I'm really curious to see how these patterns play out. And if it drops below that, thesis is incorrect and we go back down to $5. And that's, you know, that's bear territory. So I'm, I'm not enjoying that probably you know possibility but it is a probability I don't even like saying the word bear territory but so the last one I'm going to show you is just one of my longer term plays and whilst there's many opportunities for trading we have been talking about on the show what it you know long-term plays and what that looks like so for me OMG was one of my long-term plays so I have not been trading in and out of this I was accumulating down the bottom and I noticed the the breakup and I added a little bit more and it has hit a lot of targets and that's also had a 40% um, retrace back to the breakout zone there's a lot of support here so I'd like also to see a reaccumulation channel form for um, OMG and uh, I chose OMG because for me that was like a blue chip um, investment from the beginning it's got utility, it's um, scaling with Ethereum, it is being used, it's a working product. So as you can see, it hasn't done the mega pumps that other things have done. But for me, it's been a nice steady pace. A lot of people have been waiting a long time mm -hmm. for OMG to take off. Yeah. I gave up waiting. I held that for, for, for forever, but it didn't move. <laughs> Yes, yes, I know. It's been a real patience tester and patience is the thing that I'm 
always <laughs> trying to to improve on. So yes, this one is I was actually quite shocked when I brought the chart up because I went back to the Beatrix, Beatrix, Beatrix chart and because this one's got the most um, price history because the newer um, charts don't. So I was actually very excited to see an Omega giant cappuccino forming and a multi-year cup and handle for me is pretty blaringly obvious that we should see trend continuation and yes and when I talk about a, a blue chip you know it's not doing crazy doge stuff but it is slowly making its way up and that's why I haven't you know taken any crazy profits yet I'm happy to just see this one solidly move through its cycle and of course readjust and you can see we're at where the most support and buy action is happening right through here our point of control the red line there is the POC, and this is this is where the most action is. So, for me, this still looks great, and I can only go by what I'm seeing now. And of course, I'm open to trend change should my thesis change. Just staying on that 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 note. I mean, obviously, we're coming up to bit one five five nine in, in July. Uh, some people get confused about these layer two technologies like OMG, X Dye, Loop Ring. Uh, Polygon, um, and you know, I've had it said to me numerous times recently. Uh, well, they're going to become null and void when ETH 2.0 happens, etc. Simply not the case, people. Uh, I can tell you from people that actually work in blockchain uh, are in the industry, uh, layer two tech is is a sector. Look closely at it. Not financial advice on this show, but uh, I certainly have a, a decent percentage of my stack in that sector. I was just going to say that. Um... If you've hit some nice profit targets, it is prudent to take a tiny bit off and just stash it away should we get some dips and then you feel better about the dips. When your long-term thesis is to hold that position for the trend still, it still feels nice to be able to do some dip buying. So that's my suggestion. Very truly, Anne, and and typically the thesis for me has always been uh, take out your initial investment, then you're playing with the house's money, let it ride. It's typically how I play it, but uh, on our Monday show <laughs> together, I uh, by mistake showed Pirate Chain. Uh, it was three dollars fifty then. It's now up to uh, seven forty as we record. <laughs> so if I were to take my uh, initial stake out, that would only be two hundred dollars. So I had to take a little bit more than that. In the Did you have Pirate Chain, Jesse? No. Ah, uh, no, I actually don't uh, hold any Pirate Chain, although. Just privacy uh, plus crypto is something I'm quite um, passionate about for sure. Look, on that note, that's actually a good segue into an article I want to share here. Uh, Somebody that I actually really admire, Gary Gensler, has, as the uh, New York Times is calling him, the Wall Street's new top cop, has got a full plate. Gary Gensler actually taught blockchain at one of the best uh, universities in the world, MIT, He's now the SEC chairman. This has just come into effect in the last few days. So great guy in the job. But what is important here, people, is he wants to improve corporate disclosure and regulate digital assets better. Regulation, digital assets, something that most people are not too happy about, but it is inevitable. Yeah, privacy coins, you know, could be a risky asset to hold in the future. Uh, Obviously, we've seen a lot of exchanges delist them man pirate chain number one mover this week in the top 100 i think it was like 130th when we uh, spoke on monday it's now up to uh 80 80 second i think on coin gecko so it's making massive massive moves i suspect that coming regulation might have some of the the hardcore crypto people many of whom i got to know in my early days in the space they ain't fans of regulation or banks or government so Maybe a lot of capital is flowing into into the likes of Pirate Chain, Monero, etc. Quick thoughts on that space, people. Leanne, any any thoughts on regulation and privacy coins? Mm, the word regulation kind of sends shivers up my spine, and at the same time, it's something that's probably necessary if we want adoption. So I have a love hate relationship with that word, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's my thoughts about it, Jesse. Yeah, I think I mean yeah. There's a certain amount of regulation that's that's necessary, right? But um, 
but that's the entire point, the necessary, and no, no more beyond that. Look, even, even when I'm talking on this channel right now, I, I, I have to say that all of my crypto was gifted to me, and everything that I have in, in crypto is, is uh, it's, it's not purchased. I, I found it in a treasure chest. Oh, on the pirate island. That's a yeah. fact. That's a fact. <laughs> and so everything I do with it, well, it's just like play money, right? Because uh, that's, that's the way it works. Yeah. Speaking of play money, Jesse, I think you wanted to uh, have a look at Doge, the dog. I, was, I woke up last night from a weird dream, <laughs> and I was just scrolling through my Twitter on my phone. Some <laughs> girl, I don't know who she is that I'm following, and I don't know why I'm following. I don't even know if I am following, but she had a, she had a post. Bitcoin is being hoarded, which makes it useless. Dogecoin will be spent, which makes it useful. There was 238 retweets. My, my favorite response was, let me know when athletes and government officials begin to ask to be salaried in Doge, and I can take this tweet more seriously. Until now, have fun with your meme coin that doesn't do diddly squat. <laughs> uh, I tend to agree with that response. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm, that I'm shitting on Doge, nor do I think that uh, anyone is wrong to invest in Doge. I mean, we all know that uh, you could make amazing uh, profits from that, and who knows? Uh, I also am not saying that there's no use for it in the future, but to shit on Bitcoin, yeah, uh, that's an and, and, and that's when you start to become a, a, a clear joke, in my opinion. Yeah, let me unpack that on on two fronts. I mean, that 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 person uh, probably fairly new to the space. Anyone that was around in two seventeen for the Bitcoin forks uh, went through all the debates on: uh, is it a currency? Uh, is it a store of value? Clearly. BTC has become a store of value. It encourages savings as opposed to our fiat system, which is purely debt-based. So that person is just entirely wrong on that. BTC is digital gold. It's a store of value and an inflationary hedge for institutions, uh, which just really, really quickly while I remember, I wanted to share this one other article, which I found super amusing. JP Morgan, one of the biggest shitters of on the crypto space, Jamie Diamond, him and Noriel Rabini have just been going to town on it for years. Now they're putting out headlines like this, talking about Bitcoin's liquidity bouncing back. I mean, come on, this shows you where we're at. Institutions are here, uh, as I showed before. Regulation is, is on the way. And circling back on to Doge, um, look, as much as I really kind of find it very amusing, it's really just when this thing is shot into being in the top five, I think it's just fallen out of that now, but I worry that a lot of these kids who are coming into the space, you know, it's great that a, a generation are maybe getting exposure to, to crypto and blockchain through something like this, learning about investing, learning about blockchains, setting up wallets, etc. What worries me is they're not sophisticated investors. They're going to lose their shirts. And if they do, it would be something like this that just absolutely fuels the fire for a regulator to turn around and say, look, this crypto stuff is an absolute shambles look at all these kids that have lost their money we need to do something about this so you know just you know that's my position on this i don't hold doge i, I, I certainly have never told anyone don't buy it um but i certainly told a lot of people to sell it the other day <laughs> they did they're quite happy to yeah. have done it so look you know have some fun with it but it does worry me you know that thing was that, that had more vol volume than ethereum uh, for a couple of days running there. You know, there's projects with thousands of people working on them. Doge doesn't have a single developer. It's a fork of Bitcoin. It's absolutely full of issues when it comes to security. Danger, 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 danger. Not financial advice. Do whatever you want, people. <laughs> I think Doge, Doge is a really good um, kind of, you could compare it, uh, you know, not to sound like Scrooge, but you could compare it to kind of American pop culture, young society today where it's cool. Yeah. I want to vape. I want to doge. I want to, I want to be a gamer. I did all three of those things today, Jesse. I actually quit vaping. And in <laughs> fact, the only type of thing I do involving gaming now is run that Gala node, which we can talk about a little later. Yeah, that but sounds the, really I, interesting, Jesse. What, tell me about Gala nodes because I have no idea about nodes. Um, well, yeah, a Gala node is basically, it's a node that you run from your computer and it's not, it's not like these nodes that, uh, that require a huge bunch of uh, machinery and, and a lot of electricity. It's just an app you can run, which uh, doesn't take up a lot of, you know, 
computational processing uh, unless you have a really old computer. And it's nice. I, 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 every six hours I run it, and then the following morning I can check my little treasure chest, and I, and I typically get about, at this point in time, you get about 800 Gallic tokens per day, but you also get NFT drops, you get all kinds of different things. And what I'm doing by running this node is I'm essentially one of, at the, at the, at the current time, as we record this, there's 9,187 different nodes in the network. And by us running it, we're allowing the games on the network to run, which allows millions of people around the world to join these games. And now at the, at the very moment, Gala only has this one game at the, called Town Star, which is kind of the new and improved version of, uh, far, what was that farming game that was really popular? I don't they had farm, mil- farm Town, I think it was called, Farmland, something okay, like that. Okay. And it, it was huge. And the same people who, who did that, they're, they're trying to kind of bring this into the, the space again, but this time they're involved in cryptocurrency and it's just new and improved. And, and these, things are, these things are extremely popular. And, and as, as we said earlier, yes, I have done gaming in the past, but I kind of strictly stuck to like one or two games, like either, you know, Call of Duty shooting people up or, or uh, you know, one of these other Dota games. But there are, as we know, there's, there's millions of people, almost a billion people around the world who are gaming daily. And if you start integrating real, real life uh, money, basically, uh, you know, whether it's crypto, crypto that can be turned into fiat or it's, or it's uh, crypto NFTs, which all of these things have value. I mean, it's not just games that people enjoy playing, but it's games that can bring you some cha-ching, some, some sort some of kind cha-ching. of, you know, cheddar. Yeah, <laughs> something that, 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 that goes beyond fun. Um, and Gala, after I've done a bunch, bunch of research into them, their team has huge experience in this. Their future looks bright. And it's practically in beta mode at this point, and it's already getting a lot of followers, a lot of subscribers. The nodes are going up by the thousands per per uh, month. So yeah, it's, it's cool so far, and I'm enjoying it. But Jesse, uh, look, I'm really, really enjoying seeing how your involvement in the whole blockchain and crypto space has evolved. You know, it was the two of us in 2016, sort of buying some Bitcoin. Not quite sure exactly what we were doing, um, but you know, to be at a point now where you're effectively investing in a project you believe in there's a yield from it um you know i think the barrier to entry there is quite quite high wasn't it what would you, you pay for the uh the node it was um if you if you converted the ethereum to usd it's about seven and a half thousand dollars i think with any investment really uh leanne you're the expert here but really it's sort of about anticipating the crowd and obviously that's what ta is mm. all about but you know what i would say about gaming I think it uh, will be one of the huge drivers uh, within the blockchain space. We follow Axie very, very closely on this channel for uh, quite a while now. And, you know, there's 2.7 billion gamers on this planet. The revenue from from gaming is more than movies and music combined. Mm. So these play-to-earn games on the blockchain, you know, you only need a small percentage of those gamers coming over to blockchain. And as, as you're seeing... Uh, through your use of uh, these these uh, these games in the space, Jesse, that you know the quality is getting better by the day. So it's going to be fascinating to follow your uh, your journey with your Gala node. Um, I'm excited as well. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll keep the audience updated how how that all goes. But um, Leanne, just any sort of final thoughts on is your investment thesis likely to change uh, when you feel we're sort of getting into that back half, maybe later third of, of, uh, of this bull run cycle. What, would you, what could you share with especially the newbies on, on that topic? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of thinking this week because that drop in Bitcoin does have a bearish look at the moment. And whilst that can change, I've also, it also made me think, what would I do tomorrow if this thing retraced? And what would I do if all my altcoins dropped 80% again? Um, and it's okay that I've had this long-term thesis for this year, but that doesn't mean it's going to play out that way. So it's made me readjust my profit-taking levels, um, you know, having dip capital, that sort of thing. So has it changed? I guess, yes, I'm adapting a little bit to a shorter time frame possibly than I thought. Um and I'm, I'm trying to hedge, you know, what if I'm wrong and the trend doesn't continue until the end of the year like I've anticipated that it will. 
what what if it gets cut short? So I'm trying to adapt my plan to um, something that I'll be I'll be happy either way, and I, I will have. And and you know the safe way doesn't always make you the most money, but um, I'm feeling like this sense of I need to play it a little bit safer lately. So this week's made me think about safety a lot more. And whatever that means for each person, it's very individual. And we've talked about taking out risk capital and things like that. You know, I sold some soul. I sold my soul to the devil. <laughs> I, sold some, I sold some soul the other day and it was difficult. It was. It hit my target. You know, you feel those feelings of these things. My target is like $100. It was really difficult to take profit. Um, and, and when it's difficult is the time you probably should be taking profit. <laughs> uh, right. so, and that doesn't mean you can't jump back into a longer trade with that profit. But the point is there, there's some cash on the sidelines for either scenario. And that was very difficult for me. So I've, I've also learned that when it's difficult, it's probably prudent. It's, it's, it's never easy to take profit when something's going up a million. Like it's not, it's not easy to take profit on Doge when it's fifty cents. You want the dollar, so mm. it's it's that constant working out of what what does this feel like and what does that equal in trading terms. Well, when you're feeling really good, it's probably a time to take a tiny bit off the table. You don't have to take it all, but a tiny bit. Yeah, mm. I was going to say I, I in in this. In this past couple of months, it's the first time in my life where I have seen green for at least a week. And especially if it was a coin that I was already kind of planning on getting out of entirely. Uh, like I've done mm. this with some where I've, I just ripped everything out, even though it was just green, 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 green. And for some of them, it kept going green. And I was so happy. I still was so happy because... Mm just based on the past of seeing it green, 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 and then brrr, red and never have taken anything, I still feel like, well, I don't care because it could still go for another, and it does. It, maybe it goes for a whole other week of green, then it drops. And then mm. once it passes down where I got those profits, I go, see, I got out there. And ha had I not, it would have just gone like that. And then I would have yeah. been like, what am I doing? I spent all this time doing nothing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so Jesse, I know you've uh, been one of the more prolific holders of, of altcoins that I know. Um, <laughs> ha, what, what are you moving into? Are you saying you've got you've partially gone back into fiat, or are you? you tell I was us just waiting you're... for the I was waiting for the right time to full on uh, get rid of uh, yeah get out of a lot of positions and and but you know getting back into fiat has been something uh concerning for me uh because obviously i want to i want to uh only put it into well i don't know obviously but personally and i think you guys would agree that if i'm getting out of uh smaller let's just say less useful coins or less long-term coins i want to you know migrate that into bitcoin ethereum uh st stable coins like usdc or usdt um and then even just some of my more long-term altcoin uh, projects. But um, the concept of eventually getting crypto into some fiat sometimes always is on my mind. And because I am a privacy guy, because I am from America, take that how you will, uh, because of all of these uh, roadblocks and hurdles there are, um, it does worry, concern, interest me uh, uh, on the different uh, avenues one might have to take, uh, let's just say, to be the most comfortable. And, mm -hmm. um, well, I and also so, yeah. like what you did recently, Jesse. Um, you, obviously, you earned a lot of your crypto. You've now used some of that crypto to pay somebody for another scarce asset, which was a, an investment piece of art, which I, I consider very prudent. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, like like I said before, all of all of my crypto, I found it. Uh, it I'm was in the gutter. Fly, fly. It up. Yeah, <laughs> it was just there. I was so lucky. Um, so with that crypto, <laughs> with some of that, uh, with it. some of that crypto. I, I used it uh, to uh, acquire some art through uh, some interesting, uh, some new characters that I've met in my neck of the woods. 
Um, while crypto uh, is kind of my main thing, I, I, I try to have a few main things. And uh, yeah, you could just call me Maddox the art collector now. Maddox the main man, art collector. <laughs> Ma- yeah. <laughs> We might we might follow you with a camera around the streets watching you pick up coins out of the gutter. I like it. <laughs> right? Exactly. We can do I, it yeah, exactly. I'll do I'll do an on the street piece about where to find coins Perfect. in the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, team. Short and sweet. Um, yeah. Leanne, thank you so much for that. Also, thank you for uh, joining us on, on the Monday show. We we will be back then. Now you have arranged somebody I know you rate very highly and is part of the Crypto Jungle with you. Now, if you want to yep. support this channel, people, there's a link below, Crypto Jungle, uh, 50% off your first month. You can check out Leanne on the regular in there, so I encourage you to have a look at that. And also yeah. there's our Bybit link. If you're an experienced trader, check it out. You want to quickly tell us who is joining the Hard Forking team on, on Monday? Uh, yes, uh- Justin Baloo, other aka Baloo, uh, who's um, the creator of the Crypto Jungle. So I'm in the trading room there, and I'm in the trading room at Skill Incubator with Chris Dunn. But um, Baloo is a wonderful Wyckoffian, and he is probably perfect for this time of the cycle where you're trying to work out where you are. So he'll be joining um, you on the Monday show to gauge where you are and look at different charts and it's just a really fantastic um, overview umbrella shot of, of where we are so there's a lot of value in what he does and he's 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 a, a fellow YouTube streamer so uh, you and him will be able to banter away in your familiar yeah, YouTube you're... streamy talk. Thanks once again, Leanne. It's been a pleasure to, to have you join us. You've obviously brought Matt along on Monday as well who I thought was absolutely uh, yes, fantastic. Yes. And, at a huge value. So you're you're a wonderful addition to the team and you'll be able to find both Jesse and Leanne here on the weekly on this show, people. And uh, yeah, we'll have a variety of, of, of traders for you. I think it's great to get lots of, lots of different opinions. We hope we've added some value to our audience today. I think we have. What do you reckon, people? Oh, yep. yeah. Yep. Let us know. Give us a like or a comment. Tell yeah, us. hit the like button. There's like... So many people that watch it and you never press boom, like. No smashing the like, just click it, okay? Press we it. like you, like us. Yeah, there's too much violence in this sub smashing things. Yeah. But just press it. Like things. Al, Al, Al goes in love, nice. Touch it. I think we should wave goodbye to the audience now. <laughs> Bye. Bye.